From a Christmas pizza to reindeer cake pops, we wanted to compare all the fast food Christmas menu items in the UK and the US. This is Food Wars. Happy holidays, everyone. I'm supposed to be a Christmas tree according to Target. I think I look more like a decorative frog man. Three, two, one. At the McDonald's in the US, this holiday season, you can get a smoky double quarter pounder with cheese BLT, a smoky BLT quarter pounder with cheese, and this Oreo McFlurry. We'll start with the regular smoky BLT quarter pounder with cheese. How's that? First of all, chill out with the tomatoes. Second of all, what do we think, Internet? Is this a generous portion of bacon? Yeah or nay? Wow, two slices of cheese, though. Does the quarter pounder always come with two slices of cheese? I'm curious. What makes this thing so smoky? That's very good, actually. It has like a barbecue flavor to it. If that's not enough meat for you, look what we got here. A double quarter pounder, so half pounder. Peel the cap back. I mean, there is not a tomato supply chain issue in this country, that's for sure. There's even less bacon for the double. I feel like this is too much meat, but they did put a piece of cheese in between the two patties of meat, and I appreciate that. Yeah, it's just too much. What better to wash this tasty burger down than an Oreo fudge McFlurry? Of all the things to be grateful for, the fact that the nearby McDonald's ice cream machine was working, top in the list right now. The Oreo shakes, the Oreo McFlurries, the Oreo anything at fast food places might be the best one, because it isn't vanilla. It's like the Oreo cream flavored with the cookies. Oh man, this is so good. McDonald's in the UK has a bunch of festive exclusives. We'll start with a breakfast festive item, which honestly I'm not actually convinced is particularly festive. This is a mighty muffin. I'm not trying to be a Grinch here. I'm not trying to ruin Christmas for anybody, least of all McDonald's. However, can someone please explain to me how a sausage, bacon and egg McMuffin with cheese is in any way festive whatsoever? These also come as two options. You can get this one, which is with ketchup, or there is an option with brown sauce. Moving on from breakfast, now we're onto the mains. Let's start with these, the Big Tasty Burgers. Not the most creative name, but one that kind of gets to the point, which I respect. I like the packaging of these. They come in these festive green and red little bow and gift tags. They're pretty cute. I think it's like the biggest burger that McDonald's in the UK sells. If you look at the size of this thing, it's got some heft to it. It's like a slightly more gourmet approach as well to burgers than you might normally get from McDonald's. That's still a fairly low bar because it's McDonald's. However, there's, I think, Emmental cheese on there instead of the normal American cheese. You get the tomato on there. And I forget what exactly is in this sauce. It's kind of similar to a Big Mac sauce, but not quite. It's like a sort of smokier and quite creamy sauce. It's really good. Tomatoes do not belong on burgers. If you think they do, you're wrong. It's a really, really good burger. If this stayed on the menu all year round, I probably would order this more often. It's big and it's tasty. They weren't lying. We have one festive side and it's a Cheese Bites share box. These are little discs of cheese, which are breaded and deep fried. They're still ever so slightly warm. I have forgotten exactly which cheese this is. I want to say camembert. I think it is camembert. It's really good. Like it's just a little disc of cheese that's breaded and fried. And they also come with this tangy tomato dip. It's different to regular ketchup. It is kind of like tangy. It's almost more of like a salsa vibe. I really do like this as a pairing because of it's like slightly more tangy and less sweet than ketchup might be. I think it kind of like cuts through the richness of the cheese with the acidity of the sauce. I'm giving McDonald's far too much credit here. Happy Meals have also had a festive makeover in the UK. They've been redesigned with this Elf on a Shelf design. I will say Elf on a Shelf isn't really a thing in the UK. I feel like they're trying to make it a thing with a pretty aggressive marketing push. There are no Christmas main options in the Happy Meal. However, they do have a Christmas snack option. Reindeer treats. Now, as part of a Happy Meal in the UK, you get either like a fruit bag or in this case, a carrot bag. And around Christmas time, they rebrand it as a reindeer treat. Obviously, it's pretty cute. It's just a bag of carrots, but designed slightly more towards uh, getting kids in the Christmas spirit. That said, the font that they've used for reindeer treats really reminds me of that horror movie, The Snowman. Got to balance out all of this somehow. Cheers. It will shock you to learn these taste of carrot. We also have two exclusive festive drink options. They come in these actually kind of cute Christmas themed cups. Here we have a caramel waffle latte and here we have a hot chocolate deluxe. I think the caramel waffle latte is basically just a caramel latte. And I'm not sure what they've done to make hot chocolate deluxe better than just regular hot chocolate. 
It's from McDonald's. How deluxe can it really be? It's a hot chocolate. It's all right. Now we're onto the Domino's holiday items. There are only two items at Domino's. We've got one pizza and one dessert. This is the festive one. Now this is Domino's attempt at taking a Christmas dinner and putting it on a pizza. So this contains red onion, bacon, sausage, sage and onion turkey, cranberry sauce, tomato, and mozzarella. They've gone pretty heavy on the cranberry sauce. I'm not sure how I feel about the concept of a Christmas dinner pizza. I think certain things on a Christmas dinner just kind of don't belong on a pizza. Would sprouts work on a pizza? Yeah. I hate to admit it, this is a good pizza. The cranberry sauce was the main kind of issue I think I had with it going in, but it kind of works, you know. It looks like there's a lot of it, but per bite, you're not actually getting that much. And there's enough salty things on here to actually provide quite a nice salt and sweet contrast. Maybe keep it on the menu a little bit longer, guys. Do your boy a solid. The other festive menu item at Domino's in the UK are chocolate orange cookies. When you make like a really good chocolate chip cookie, you kind of put like a ball of dough on the baking tray and then it eventually will kind of spread out when you cook it. This looks like they did that, but only cooked them halfway. Chocolate and orange is actually quite a festive flavor combination, specifically here in the UK. Honestly, I think it's mostly thanks to the success of the Terry's chocolate orange, but we'll talk more about this one later. That's pretty good. We do not have the Domino's Christmas festive pizza that the UK has. I didn't want Harry to enjoy it all by himself, so I went ahead and got a similar pizza. This one has tomato sauce, chicken, which is basically turkey, bacon, Italian sausage, and onions. And of course, need that cranberry dipping sauce. Oh God, I think it's so sick. Is anyone gonna wanna take this pizza home after I'm done? Ooh. The American version of the UK holiday pizza. Ugh. Oh, you know. It all works well together, but the cranberry sauce, actually it's not that bad. <laughs> I kind of like that. All right, UK, good call on this. Starbucks, they do it up every holiday season. I couldn't possibly get every festive Starbucks holiday drink. It's something like 20, possibly even more. I pretty much got a drink that has one of the core flavors they have, Understand that even though most of these are hot, except for this one, you get any one of these drinks, iced, mocha, frappuccino, I assume. This is just a sampling of what Starbucks has to offer. I don't even remember what one I got. I just went on the app and ordered. I mean, Starbucks, it's also not everything's available everywhere. So this is also everything I could get at the local Starbucks. And it was jumping, man, it was jumping. Sugar cookie, almond milk, latte, it, can you just get it with regular milk? That'd be the almond one, I don't know. But I mean, sugar cookies, come on. Whoa, it's pretty sweet. Oh, bro, there's like stuff floating in it. What is that? Do you see that in there? I think like the flavor syrup or whatever started to separate. <laughs> I do like that. I don't know if I could drink a whole one of those. It's like really sweet. It's got a powerful flavor. Next one, chestnut praline latte. We did something pralines and it was dreadful. Let's see if Starbucks can, uh, can knock out a praline drink. I would actually pick this over that just because I could see myself enjoying a whole grande size of that without like getting a headache. All right, Starbucks, you're doing pralines right. Ugh. Creme brulee. The flavor isn't as strong as like their other like caramel drinks. So for that, I'll say it's better than those. It's tied with this one. I mean, these things are just like, they're really sweet. I feel like if I drank a whole one of those, that thing's do a number on my guts. Ooh, peppermint mocha. Let's go. Fantastic. Peppermint mocha. This is the best one. This job rules. I love being able to do this. Irish cream cold brew. Isn't Irish cream meant to be like a hot drink with whiskey, right? I'm assuming this doesn't have any alcohol in it. <laughs> Let's find out together. Irish cream anything without the alcohol? Nah, not worth it. Ah, toasted white chocolate mocha. Cheers. Mm. This tastes like the holidays. This is really good. Not as objectionable as I remember. So Starbucks took our Food Wars advice and kind of chilled out on making insane flavored drinks. And I appreciate that. Thank you, Starbucks. Also, coffee. There's so many 
signature coffee bean blends that Starbucks has. I only got two, the holiday blend and the Christmas blend. Sweet maple and herbs, let's go. Spiced chocolate and spruce tips. All right, coffee and trees together at last. So what Starbucks has done for Christmas in the UK is introduce four seasonal syrup flavors, and then you can use these to create a bunch of drinks, including lattes, frappuccinos, and more. So what I've done here is just get the four coffee flavors in latte versions, and then there's also an exclusive hot chocolate. I don't really drink coffee as it is, but I feel like these barely taste of coffee anyways. I will start on the end with eggnog latte. I don't really know what eggnog is still. I've done a couple of these Christmas episodes now. As far as I can tell, it's like kind of nutmeggy and slightly custardy. But that's not actually too bad. It's not overly sweet. You get like a little bit of warmth from what I think is the nutmeg. Honestly, pleasantly surprised by the eggnog latte. Next up, we've got a toffee nut latte. I don't understand why toffee and nut as a flavor combination is Christmassy. Oh, oh no. Oh, there's something wrong there. I think whatever they've used to add the nut flavoring to this is not working out at all for me. Really kind of like attacking my tongue. I'm dressed as an elf. I'm more qualified than anyone to talk about what is and isn't Christmassy, and I'm not sure that's Christmassy. It's also just not very nice. Next one is a caramel waffle latte. Again, not sure how Christmassy this is exactly, but it sounds pretty good. It's basically like a big cup of milk that someone has just kind of wafted some waffle over. Don't think I would be rushing to drink that again. Next one is a gingerbread latte. I will allow this one. Gingerbread is a Christmassy flavor. So next up, we've got a praline cookie hot chocolate. <laughs> that's so bad, man. Oh no, that's nasty. Oh, how did they mess gingerbread up that badly? I'm sure there are people out there who really love Starbucks gingerbread. I'm not trying to like pass judgment on you or anything, but Jesus, that's bad. That was the last of the latte options and I'm kind of glad to see the back of them. The last Christmas exclusive we have in the UK is this praline cookie hot chocolate. I don't get too much of the praline flavor. There's also little bits of like crunchy stuff in there, which I assume is what the cookie bit is referring to. I don't know if I'd be rushing to get that over just a standard hot chocolate, but yeah, decent. And uh, compared to some of the coffee options, really not that offensive. Now, while the eggnog latte might have been my favorite, unfortunately, it's also the least healthy option on the seasonal menu. A venti eggnog latte contains almost 500 calories as well as 52.8 grams of sugar, which is bizarre to me because honestly, it didn't taste as outright sweet as most of the other ones. Now, if you are a huge fan of Starbucks's Christmas options, then good news, because you can have them at home. You can get some coffee beans in Starbucks's signature Christmas blends, including the classic Christmas blend, and also a blonde roast version. And if for some reason you also liked the gingerbread or toffee nut syrups, unlike me, you can also get these at home as well. Although I will say they each cost, I think, six pounds, which seems like a lot of money. The last at-home item to test is the color-changing reusable cup. We've got some hot water here. I'm gonna put it in and see if it actually does react to it and change color. Oh, look at it go. Oh, that's actually pretty cool. That worked like really fast. I don't know if I was expecting it to work that quickly. Color changing cups, they, they change color. Yes to the food, let's go. Once again, this is just a small sample of the food you can get this holiday season at Starbucks. They didn't have everything. This is all the things that they had available. So that's what I got. Let's start all the way down here. It is of course, a little reindeer pop. A chocolate pistachio swirl. Are pistachios specifically festive or holiday themed? That's really dry. Oh man. Sugar plum danish. Why not, right? This is actually very good. Cranberry bliss bar. I mean, you already know. You already know. Uh, that's always a home run. It's like, Cheesecake but with cranberries on it, so great. And of course they have festive holiday cookies. As you could see, even though I ordered it, they were out. I can't be held responsible for that not being in this video, all right? Starbucks has a range of seasonal sandwiches, including a tis the season turkey sandwich. This is a turkey sandwich with some lettuce, some bacon, some sage and onion stuffing, and I think some cranberry sauce as well. I don't know if Christmas sandwiches play as much of a role in American culture as they do in British culture, but they're like a big deal over here. Basically every supermarket chain will have their own version of a Christmas sandwich. And also it's pretty traditional in a British household to make sandwiches for about a week after Christmas dinner using all the leftover turkey and all the rest of the stuff that you'll find on a Christmas dinner. Next up we have this brie and cranberry focaccia. The puns are starting to roll in with some creamy brie, cranberry chutney and spinach. I love focaccia. 
I haven't tried Starbucks version of focaccia. I might give this one a try. I didn't get much of the cranberry in that bite. It was kind of just like a bready mouthful with a little bit of brie. I will also say, if you're in store, you can ask them to heat this up for you in like a panini press. I think it would benefit from that. We didn't do that today. Moving on, we have a pigs under blankets roll. They're different to American pigs in blankets. You guys consider pigs in blankets those like hot dogs wrapped in pastry. In the UK, it's a sausage wrapped in bacon. These are called pigs under blankets because I guess they didn't want to go to the hassle of actually wrapping the sausages in the bacon. So instead you just get sausages with a layer of bacon on the top, like a blanket. Our final sandwich option is a festive feast panini. The festive feast panini contains sliced turkey breast, beechwood smoked bacon, turkey gravy, sage and onion stuffing, and cranberry sauce on a ciabatta panini. Then finally, Starbucks has a bunch of Christmas baked goods. So what we have here is Starbucks's gingerbread barista. Obviously this time he's dressed up for the holidays. Then here we have a ginger mini loaf cake. It's just like a little mini ginger cake with some kind of icing on the top. What's actually in this? It's just like a pretty standard buttercream icing. Then we have a red velvet loaf cake. I think you can get this at other times of the year, but for Christmas, they kind of put these Christmas themed sprinkles on it. I know it's basically just chocolate cake with food dye in it, but pretty tasty. Then it's a triumphant return for the Christmas tree brownie. I think these look great and they taste good too. It's time. The moment I've been waiting for, and I hope you all at home have been waiting for too, it's the return of the king. It's South Pole Sam, everybody. He's back, third year running, undefeated champion of the Starbucks Christmas menu. He is a shortbread cookie. He's covered in chocolate, got a little chocolate button for his middle bit. He's so cute. I love him. He's still my son. I would fight to the death for South Pole Sam, and I hope you would too. I'm not gonna eat him. I can't do it. I'm sorry, he's too cute. Now, last Christmas, we also had a North Pole nap, which was a polar bear cookie. I've made up a lot of uh, lore in my head about South Pole Sam and North Pole Nat having a very cute long distance relationship. Unfortunately, they didn't have a North Pole Nat at the Starbucks we went to today. It is still on the website, so I think she is still around. Maybe she and Sam are going through like a bit of a rough patch right now. In addition to the toffee nut latte, you can also get a toffee nut muffin. Again, I'm not convinced on just how Christmassy toffee nut is as a flavor combination. However, I feel like this is probably gonna taste way better than the latte version of it did. Mm -hmm. In addition to the toffee nut muffin, you can also get a toffee nut mini loaf cake. Ah! You okay, my child? I'm being uh, peer pressured into smelling and possibly trying the syrups in their raw form. There's not a lot I wouldn't do for content. <coughs> This one's actually not as offensive. I don't know what was in that one. Which is weird, because I think I probably hated the gingerbread latte more. <coughs> no. Muffin. Let's talk about KFC's festive items, which are technically just one festive item. This is the gravy triple bucket. So what you get with this is four orders of fries, eight spicy wings, six chicken fillets, six pieces of chicken, an order of popcorn chicken, and two big things of gravy. Again, I'm not sure what makes this particularly festive because all of these are things that you can just get on the menu all year round. I think they've just kind of leaned into making the gravy the star of the show in this one, which I guess gravy is like a Christmas dinner thing, so it does sort of make sense, but yeah, not super festive KFC. If they really wanted to get festive, we've come up with the brilliant idea of them serving turkey around Christmas. I mean, imagine how great it would be if they either sold like an entire deep fried turkey or at least just like some deep fried turkey wings. They'd be enormous, they'd be so delicious. Great PR. KFC, if you want to talk more, you know how to find me. The only particularly Christmassy thing about this is actually the bucket itself. They've gone for quite a cute little Christmassy bucket design. On this side you have Santa Claus, Father Christmas himself. Does he like KFC? Who's to say? I do absolutely love KFC gravy. Mm, I don't know what they're putting in there. I don't think I want to know. Pure salt and preservatives, but my God, does it taste good? At our KFC, you can get the 12-piece holiday bucket with six free cookies seen here. First of all, six pieces of chicken in this very festive bucket. Let's take a look at that cap. Look at the top of that. It's so festive and fun. Little do you realize this bucket is filled with cooked flesh. 12 pieces in there. And you get six biscuits. Yo! Again, for everyone in the UK, this is a biscuit in America. Two sides, we went with mashed potatoes and mac and cheese, fries, and, as stated, six free cookies. Cookie royal flush for you and five of your friends. Yeah, right, you're eating all these. Also, this holiday season, a famous bowl is only $5 for all you, 
lonely guys <laughs> to eat alone in silence in your studio apartment. And according to KFC.com, uh, this holiday season, it's all about sharing is caring. The idea is to try to get people to remember the joy that comes with sitting down with folks you care about and sharing a meal. It's really that simple. What better reason to break bread, in this case chicken, than the holidays? Thanks, KFC, but I think I'll eat this alone by myself over the course of a weekend. Subway has one Christmas sandwich option in the UK, and it's called the Festive Turkey Stack. Uh, <laughs> so I got this one plain without any salad or sauces. It's basically just turkey breast, hash browns, and bacon. Subway in the UK do this with a few things. If they say something is a stack on the menu, all that means is that they've added some hash browns to it. Is this festive? Would it have killed them to get like a little cranberry sauce or some stuffing maybe involved? What can you say? It's a sub with some turkey, some bacon, and some hash browns in it. It's pretty bland. Currently, the main issue I'm having with this is that it's extremely dry. However, Subway has me covered. Subway UK has a seasonal sauce option, which is a pot of gravy. I am significantly less excited about this than I would be about, say, KFC gravy. That's perfectly palatable gravy. Let's see how it works with the sub. That's actually a significant improvement on the sandwich on its own. If you have both of these two things together, this actually is a pretty good festive sub. Shout out to Subway. Oreos does a bunch of stuff around the holidays. I grabbed these three. This one over here, very excited about snickerdoodle Oreos. Oh my God, I'm gonna kill these. Yeah, dude. White fudge covered Oreos. I mean, I grabbed it because they got the snow on here, right? So I'm assuming that this is holidays, right? You, they wouldn't have the snow packaging in July, right? Fantastic idea, Oreo. White fudge covered Oreos. Yeah, I like these. And this your Oreo has snowballs. Are these new? I don't think I've ever seen these before. I mean, the packaging's a little like, just put a sticker on this. That could have been it. Why do you have to do this? I don't. Packaging two of three has been breached. We're almost at the food, guys. According to package layer number one, there's some sort of like cream inside of these, right? So let's keep the picture nearby. That's what we're expecting. As advertised, pretty close. I mean, I think they're actually pretty generous with whatever fluffy goo they're putting in here. But I gotta tell you, these don't taste very good. They're like the, the epitome of just okay. Every year, Kit Kat. They drop the gingerbread cookie Kit Kats. Catch. Happy holidays! Get in there. It's like a little more maple syrupy than I remember. What do you think? I didn't stop by Dunkin's this year, but I did at Target see that they have the Dunkin' Hot Chocolate Bomb. It's the mint flavored one. Normally this would be submerged in hot milk to make hot chocolate. And then, nice little surprise. Yo! Oh, that's fun! And they're minty. Every year. Reese's does something where they just do shapes. Reese's trees. I mean, what do you think it's gonna look like? Oh my God, it actually looks like a tree. Hey, hey. last year it was like, or maybe we got the snowman or the Santa. One year we got it and it just looked like a total mess. This year, also got white trees. I look more like a tree than this right now. Hershey's Kisses, mwah, 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 this holiday season. You get probably more than two varieties, but these are the two that are our target. Sugar cookie, uh-oh. Yep. It's kind of giving me a headache. But other than that, not bad. Hot cocoa. Ah. Hey, Brian. Mm. These just taste like soft Hershey Kisses. I wasn't getting cocoa other than just like chocolate. Twix. Santa's. Oh, it's a Santa head. Oh, okay. It's exactly like a Twix, so if you're sick of the Twix shape, you can get this shape instead. Now, Merry Cherry Gummy Bear. I don't even know if this is available outside of the US or not. I didn't look, I just thought, yo, I gotta show this off, so. One pound of gummy. like when Han Solo got frozen in carbonite or whatever it was in Star Wars. I guess the question is like, what am I supposed to do with this? Would you put this on a tray and people would just like cut slices off of it? This bear 
is equal to 385 standard size gummy bears. That's really funny that they did that math. So like, just this ear and part of the eye is one. Now I understand why gummy bears come in like small bites. I have no idea what to do with this. Jelly Belly Gingerbread House Kit. I have noticed over the past few years, a lot of candy brands are doing their own gingerbread house kit sort of thing. It was the last year, the year before, there was a Sour Patch Kid Gingerbread Ski Chalet, which is actually pretty cool. Oh my God, that gummy bear. I have the biggest headache now. The Captain, Captain Crunch, has a Christmas Crunch fun box, fun holiday shapes, but I don't think the flavor's changed. Look at this like a uh, color to corn ratio. It's ridiculous. They want the first bowl that comes out to be loaded with the fun stuff. So you're like, wow, they are really generous. And then by the time you get like halfway through the box, you're like, wait, what happened? Captain, man, what are you doing? Come on. You didn't work your way up the Navy. Just to pull something like this, bro, for shame. We thought it'd be fun to share some iconic British Christmas snacks with you outside of the traditional fast food menu setting. British people absolutely love our crisps. We eat over 6 billion packets of crisps per year, which is more than the rest of Europe put together, which is kind of crazy when you consider we only account for maybe 10% of the population of Europe. It's become kind of a weird tradition for British supermarkets to come up with some very unusual flavors around Christmas time. Basically, they'll take anything that could be considered a Christmas flavor and put it on a crisp. So in the past, we've ended up with things like Christmas tree flavored crisps, mince pie flavor, flavored crisps, Brussels sprout flavored crisps, and then today we have pigs in blankets crisps, as well as Christmas pudding crisps. I said crisps a lot there. Also, while not technically a crisp, but pretty similar, we have these kind of cheese ball things, which in this case have been flavored with turkey and stuffing. This is such an enormous bag as well. Turkey and stuffing bites. These actually look and smell quite good. You know what? These are good. <laughs> I like these. Why are these good? <laughs> these are the ones I'm probably least excited about. Christmas pudding crisps. Smells of Christmas pudding. That in itself is quite impressive. No, not bad. <laughs> All you get is just like raisin from that. It's like a crunchy raisin. Last but by no means least, some Pigs in Blankets flavored crisps. Hmm. It's pretty low key actually, I like these. Honestly, while I don't want to admit it, I do think the turkey and stuffing ball things were probably the best of those three. The next thing we wanna show you is a Christmas pudding. Six month matured by Christmas day. What is Christmas pudding? Well, traditionally it's a bunch of different cooked fruits which are held together with suet. Suet is, I think, traditionally animal fat mixed with flour, whereas this one is vegetarian friendly, so this is vegetable fats mixed with flour. This thing has deep, deep roots in British culture. People have been making this in the UK since medieval times. It also has really deep links to Christianity and the Christian festival of Christmas. Traditionally, it had 13 ingredients, which were meant to represent Jesus and the 12 apostles. Traditionally, as British households were cooking the fruit for their Christmas pudding, they would take it in turns to stir the pot from east to west in order to honor the Magi and their journey in that direction. Ta-da! Oh, it's beautiful. It doesn't smell too bad. Once the cooked pudding is out of its mold, here comes the brandy. Now it's time for the really fun part. Well, for me, that was great fun. I don't know how well the camera was able to capture it, but it's tradition to soak it in alcohol and then set it on fire. I'm still not really sure what that accomplishes. I guess it adds a little bit of flavor to it from the kind of burning off of the alcohol, but leaving the brandy flavor, and maybe also just like caramelizes the outside slightly. Man, I just, I can see the raisins in this and I have very little interest in eating it, but here we go. I did get quite a lot of the brandy taste, which actually isn't too bad, especially once you set fire to it and kind of burn off some of the harsher alcohol notes. It's a tradition, it's a bit of fun, still not something that I would personally choose to have as part of my Christmas dinner. We covered a little bit of chocolate in the last Christmas episode, but we did want to pick out just a few more classic chocolate options around Christmas in the UK. One such option is the Ferrero Rocher. We have this giant one, which I've never actually had before, and I'm kind of intrigued to see what's inside it. And then also a box of just the regular Ferreros. 
Did you know that the chocolate stuff in this is literally just Nutella? It's owned by the same company. These have always been marketed in the UK as quite a fancy option, and that does kind of hold true. They're quite expensive. If I ever had these in the house growing up, it was because someone had given them to us as a gift, for example. And it was quite a treat if you got to share a box of these on Christmas Eve or on Christmas evening. I love the taste of chocolate and nuts combined together, so they were always up my street. It's just a really delicious, quite indulgent treat. Leon, what's involved? Charlie? I've not actually had one of these giant ones before, and I'm really intrigued to see what's actually in there. It's just a hollow ball. I think this loses something. You need the Nutella and the nut in the middle. I think just get the regular ones. Last but not least, let's talk about the Terry's Chocolate Orange. Terry's Chocolate Oranges are huge in the UK. They've been around for decades. You always see them on TV and the run up to Christmas when they launch and people just really love them over here. I'm gonna say something and I've taken stick for this in the past, but I personally don't really like Terry's Chocolate Oranges. I just don't generally like fruit and chocolate as a combination. I'm not trying to take them away from anyone else. You can enjoy what you want to enjoy. However, not really for me. So Terry's had a series of adverts with comedian Dawn French. Now the marketing slogan was always, don't tap it, whack it what you get is basically a ball of chocolate, but it is split into segments, kind of representing an orange. The idea is that to separate these, you just give it a good whack. Ta-da! Although it technically isn't an exclusive item, this holiday season, Pepsi, at least in the US, has really been pushing for this idea or this thing called Pilk, which is Pepsi and milk. They even have an ad campaign with Lindsay Lohan, where, you guessed it, she is mixing Pepsi and milk, and it seems like, on Twitter, they're even trying to encourage other people to mix Pepsi with milk or vanilla creamer to make pilk recipes. She doesn't actually drink it. She combines it, she goes for a sip, they cut to a shot of something, they cut back, and she's like, yum. I really don't want to do this. I feel like it's gonna make me nauseous. So what do you think, should I do the Pepsi and then the milk, or the milk and the Pepsi? It looks like she went Pepsi first and then the milk. But then she didn't drink it, see? Ugh, hang on. I'm typing in pilk recipe, like, like, the duh, how's that work? Yeah, everyone online is like, this is a nightmare. And as you are aware, whenever someone says something on the internet, it's true and we should believe it. I'm going Pepsi, then milk, because that's how Lohan did it. Ugh! Milk is gross. Do we like this pilk consistency, or should I, should I milk my pilk more? I don't think that's very good at all. It isn't strong in the flavor. It's kind of just like weak Pepsi that's a little creamier. Nice try, Pepsi. But you guys are gonna do some R&D and actually bottle something new. They're making us make the drinks at home now. What the hell's that? No, Pepsi, no. No to Pilk, no Pilk. Pilk is bad. Don't drink Pilk. Merry Christmas, you filthy animals.